We talked about important output concepts in the morning, size and resolution for both printed output, screen-based output. We talked about JPEG quality and how to set that setting. And we talked about the fundamental question of why doesn't my output, whether it's printed or it's on the web, why doesn't it look like what I see in Lightroom and what you can do about that. So we went into monitor calibration and printer profiles and color spaces and soft proofing. And I managed, I think, not to put anybody to sleep. So, you know, and, I, and hopefully that was helpful to you guys. Um, and then we, we went into the print module and I showed you how to create different layouts. So single, single photos on a page, multiple photos on a page, contact sheets. Uh, we went further with the contact sheet functionality into more attractive layouts. We did picture packages where you have multiple sizes of photos on, on one page. And then we went into more creative multi-photo layouts where you can freeform layout photos on a page. Let's see what that one is. Okay. So those are the layouts. The, the plan this morning is I want to do a little bit of um, a little bit of cleanup or a little bit of just giving you a few more tips. And then we're going to get into how to actually print to JPEG and how to actually print to your printer. So we ended up yesterday with talking about, let me find it here, here it is, talking about um, creating a timeline collage for Facebook. And we were sizing this in pixels. And I kind of went a roundabout way to get this size to pixels. Because here in the print module, there's a place to put in inches and in resolution, but not pixels specifically. But I got an email last night from, from a colleague of mine, Kathy Eister, who pointed out that there is a way to directly put in pixels in the print module. And it's like, well, I'm embarrassed. I don't know it. But, but you know, <laughs> that's, one of the, that's one of the great things about Lightroom is that even I am always learning these cool, cool additional tips or just little features that I didn't notice. There was also a question yesterday about can I switch the ruler, which I'll show you here, it's not showing, can I switch it to centimeters or can I work in centimeters even if I have the American version of the software? And I said no, but the answer is yes. So here in the print module, in the guide section, first I'll go ahead and show the guide so you see the ruler up top here. But right here at the top, we have ruler units, and it's set to inches. So here's centimeters. So for whoever asked that, you can switch it to centimeters. And you'll see that if you're going to JPEG, and I come down to the print job panel, it's set to JPEG, that now my file dimensions here are in centimeters. Now, personally, I'm not going to use centimeters. So while that's nice to know, it doesn't really help me. But it also turns out, under ruler units here, that we've got points. And I didn't know what points was, so I just ignored it. But points will give me pixels. So my ruler here now is in pixels. And I can size this Facebook timeline directly now here in the print job panel under custom file dimensions by just putting the exact pixel count that I need. A lot easier than what I went through. So I believe this was 851 pixels wide by 315 pixels high. And I'm good to go. Now, because I changed um, th those numbers, it messed up my layout a little bit. But of course, I can continue to work on that and, and get it to exactly as I'd like it. Now, I just want to mention that Kathy Eister is a photography, Photoshop, and Lightroom instructor um, that I've worked with in Missoula, Montana. And she's got an excellent blog at kathyeister.com. She's really good at writing about what could be complicated photography concepts and, and boiling them down into really easy to understand terms. So um, check out kathyeister.com. Eister is E-Y-S-T-E-R and Kathy is with a K. OK, so that's the first one. And, and I'll just point out also that if I was going to make a layout here for my iPad, again, it's very easy. I know the dimensions on the old one. It was 1024 by 768 in terms of pixels. 
and I've got that size, I'm ready to go. Okay. All right. Now, one other thing I wanted to mention from yesterday, you probably noticed it, it happened several times during the day when I did some work and then I wanted to undo my work. Now, in Lightroom, when you want to undo your last step, it's Controller Command Z, as in zebra. And you can undo five steps by just doing that five times. Once you close Lightroom, of course, it forgets all that, so you can't do it. But I had a bug going on where I wasn't able to do that, and it, it jumped me back to some odd places. But I fixed that bug, I believe, and now if I do Controller Command Z, I'm undoing my work. Now, sometimes when Lightroom is not working as it's supposed to, and I've seen it work fine before, um, there's this file called the preferences file that it helps to delete. Now I'm not going to get to, I'm not going to get into how to find that preference file on your computer, but you can Google, you know, Lightroom preferences file location. It will tell you where it is. So I did that last night, and I believe that Lightroom is going gonna, is gonna to work very well today. All right, the next thing I wanted to show you here, I mentioned that I wanted to show you how to clean up your collections panel a little bit, in that we have regular collections that we created in the library module just to pull together photos for our output. And then we also now have these special print collections that have the little print symbol that are not just photos, but the saved combination of photos and our design. So this is one we did yesterday, and I saved it, and here's another one. Now, my collections panel at home has become a mess because it's, it's just hard to find things, right? So you can organize your collections into collection sets. Now, I covered this in my Lightroom Fundamentals course, but I want to show it to you again briefly here because I think that as you create a lot of output and you save that output, you're going to want to be able to, to keep it better organized than what I have here. So a collection set is just a folder of collections. Like here I have a Creative Live collection set. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the plus next to collections here, say create collection set, and we'll call this my print output. I'm going to ignore that I have a special Creative Live print section because I wouldn't have that at home. And I'm going to call this print output. Nothing special about that name. You may, you'll find your own organizational answers. But So I'll click on Create. I see that right here. And I know it's a collection set because it's got a little box icon. And then I'm going to drag my prints, my print collections, up into that collection set. And if that doesn't work, I'm going to do it again more carefully. You have to drag to just the right part. And then I'm going to let go, and it will be nested in there. So I've moved one of my prints from yesterday. Now I'm going to click, shift, click. So click on the first, shift, click on the last. And then I can click, hold, and drag the rest of them up into there. Now, if I've put together, I mentioned the workflow for me is in the library module, pull together the photos, put them in a regular collection, then go through develop, and then into output, and then save your output work as a special print collection. So I have both a regular photo collection and this print collection with a design. If I don't need the regular photo collection anymore, I can go ahead and delete that. So this, let me see here. This beach collage photo, I'll open up the film strip so you'll see that this has some photos in it. So this beach collage photos collection was just my candidates for my collage. It was a regular collection. But now, up here, I have a print collection. It doesn't look very attractive right now. But it, the print collection has the photos and the design. Unless I'm going to make something else with this beach collage photos, like a, like a book or a slideshow, I can delete the regular collection. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on the regular collection, control click on a single button Mac mouse, and I'm going to say delete. And I'm just deleting the collection. The photos will still be in Lightroom. They'll still be on my hard drive. Say delete. And I've started to clean this up. So I tend to organize my output into collection sets by type of output. Um, you know, you, you, again, you, you may find other ways to organize them, 
But this print output collection, when I'm not using them, I can click on this downward triangle to collapse it so it doesn't take up so much space in the collections panel. I can do that up here with Creative Live as well. And then I have a much shorter panel. Another, another tip I want to show you is that as I've been kind of scrolling, you know, from one section up here down to the next, you know, you can do a lot of scrolling when you have a lot of items. You can switch any, any panel in Lightroom, left side, right side, other modules. You can right click on any of the, of the panel names here and say solo mode. And that way, when you open up one window, it collapses all the others. So this print job, I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to say solo mode. And now notice that if I open up layout style, everything else is collapsed. Not so much scrolling. So that's solo mode. OK. The next thing I want to show you, because I, it's turned out that I have more time than I, than I thought I did, which is great, because we're going to be, be able to cover more about slideshows and web galleries. But I want to show you a little bit more about watermarking. I skipped that, thinking I wouldn't have time. But let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to start by just creating a single photo layout here. So this is a little bit of a review of that. I'm going to, first of all, I've got this saved print here that I don't want to mess up. So here in the collections panel, I want to make sure that I don't have that saved print highlighted, right? Because if I have this highlighted and I start working, I'm going to mess this up. I'm, it's going to be saving all of the work I'm doing. The tape recorder is turned on. So I'm going to go back to just a regular collection of photos here just to start with to get away from my saved prints. And we'll do a single photo layout here. So I'll start with page setup. I'll choose letter size paper, so I'm good to go on that. And over in the print job panel, no, I don't need to do that. Um, OK, so um, letter size piece of paper. I'm going to go with single image contact sheet as my layout style here. And then I'm going to go to the layout section. And I just want one row and one column to get a single photo layout. So I'll slide page grid back to 1. And then I'll specify, specify my size here under cell size. So let's go back to my favorite 8 by 10 result. And I've got an 8 by 10 that's filling the cell. In other words, part of it's being cropped off. Rather than do that, I'm going to go ahead, go up to the image setting section, and I'm going to uncheck Zoom to Fill. Now I've got my whole photo. OK, so that's a little bit of a review. But really, what I'm going to get to is, let's say I want to watermark this photo. OK, um, I can put a logo on it. I could put text on it. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and, and undo solo mode here. Right click, undo solo mode. Because I'm just used to, on this right-hand side, frankly, being able to scroll down and see everything. <laughs> So I'm going to go to the page section. And we have watermarking here. I'm going to check watermark. And I'm going to click on the drop down. And I could choose one that I've already created, but my goal is to teach you how to create your own watermark. So I'm going to click on Edit Watermarks. And it takes a sec to come up. But in this white box here, I can type whatever text I want. So I can type Laura Shoe Photography. Um, again, there was an example, um, a question that was asked to me by Dennis um, a couple days ago was, I want to put an inspirational quote on my photo. How do I do that? Where can I do that? Well, I can't think of one right now. So I'm just going to do, um, anybody got a quote? Got a quote, Efron? <laughs> I put him on the spot. OK. Mm -hmm. I'm, no. I'm going <laughs> to. I'm going to pay DM. There you go. I like that. OK. Thank you. <laughs> It's kind of not the right photo for that, but we'll just pretend it is. OK. Carpe diem. So that's going to be my watermark. So I've typed it in here. It's very small, and it's in the left-hand corner. Um, but I've got lots of controls here. First, I can change the font. So I'm not going to take the time to find the, the perfect, beautiful font for this. But you've got a font choice there. Sometimes you can change it to italics and bold. Um, I'll get back to alignment. 
And then you could change the color, but let's make it bigger first so that we can actually see what we're doing. So down here under watermark effects, I can just slide the proportional slider to size it. I've also got fit and I've got fill. I'll go with proportional, make it a little bit smaller. And then I can move it with various sliders, but really, oh, that's funny. I thought I could click and drag that. Um, OK. So under anchor here, I'm going to center it. Let's try the different options. OK, let's actually put it right here. So I'm going to anchor it to the right edge of the photo. And then I've got this horizontal inset to kind of push it in a little bit. Notice that I can also rotate it. I think I showed you that yesterday. Now that I've got it sized, we can come back up to the text options. And notice that I have a color box. It's white. I could choose any color, not just white, gray, and black as it originally looks. But if I click in this vertical bar, this is stuck for some reason. There we go. So I clicked in the vertical bar. I had to kind of nudge it a little bit. But now I can, ch I can choose any, any color I want. I'll go with white, though. Close that out. And then if I want to, I don't think it'll show up well on here, but I could also add a drop shadow to my text. And then if I want to fade it out, I've got this opacity slider. So that I really like. If I just don't want them to be able to print it, but I don't want the watermark to really detract a lot from the photo, I've got the opacity slider. Okay. Now, you can do a text uh, watermark, as I mentioned. You can also do a graphic. So if you've got a logo, you click on graphic here, find the file, and work, work with sizing and placing the graphic. Okay, and that's, that's how it works. Um, if you want to save this, or, or, or you need to save it actually, you'll click on Save here at the bottom. Call this Carpe Diem Watermark. <clears throat> click Create. Before I hit Create, I want to cancel. I want to stay in here for a sec. Now, you have these buttons right here that allow you to scroll through photos that you're applying the watermark to. Now, I can't scroll through right now because <clears throat> I only have one photo selected. But the nice thing is if you have multiple photos selected, you can scroll through and make sure your placement and your color looks good regardless of, of which photo um, you know, you're working with. So I'll click Save. We'll do this again. Carpe Diem Watermark. Click Create. And not only do I have the watermark on my photo right now, but I have it in my watermark library. So anytime I want to apply a watermark, it's available to me. Now, you can do watermarking in the export dialog. So you saw that in Lightroom Fundamentals in the library module. Actually, I'm going to revisit it in just a minute. Um, but you can also do watermarking in, let's see, slideshow, print, and web. So, and you have the watermarks available to you regardless of which module you create them in. All right. Any questions on how that worked? Yeah. With um, um, graphic, do you are there certain formats that it will accept and not accept, like PNG and the like? Yes, I believe PNG or JPEG. Yeah. So PNG will allow you to have transparency in your in your watermark. Um, JPEG will not. If you design something with transparency in Photoshop and then save it as a JPEG, tra that transparency will turn white. Okay. All right. Any, did anything come up as far as watermarking? Or should yeah, I keep a couple going? actually. Okay. Um, Wayne is wondering what's the, what's the keystroke to, uh, to make the copyright Ooh. symbol? Okay. So on a Mac, this is, this is, this is going to be a point for the Mac. Yesterday we had a couple points for the PC. But on the Mac, it's option G. On a PC, if you have a keyboard that has a numeric keypad on the right-hand side, then you can hold the Alt key down and keep it down as you type 0169. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it, it's, a, it's a little bit involved. 
You probably wouldn't guess that. But you wouldn't guess option G either. So Alt-0169. Now on this key keyboard, I don't have that. So I could simply do left parentheses, C, right parentheses, or what I could do is go out and copy something from the web and paste it in. Now when you first open up the watermark editor, it has the copyright symbol there. Um, I wiped it out when I typed Carpe Diem.